Is anyone else here this morning already whiffed on a Lenten penance? Oh, no hand. I'm, I'm just the poor sucker that failed already. There's actually a way in which our struggling or our failing in our Lenten penances is a good thing. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting that we just give up on whatever we've committed to during this season of Lent. But our struggle with our Lenten practices is a reminder to us of our need for a Savior. That is, even our Lenten practices, even our fasting and our prayer are things that we can only accomplish, we can only do by the grace of God. We are in desperate need for a Savior, that we need to be saved. And the good news that we're offered in today's readings is that Jesus comes to do just that. As we see in the gospel, he goes to do battle for us in the desert as he confronts the evil one. And then St. Paul tells us in his letter to the the Romans that if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I say, well, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that if we confess that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. We might say, is it really that simple? Is it really that simple? Well, yes and no. (laughs) Yes, we are just required to have faith for salvation. If I profess that Jesus is Lord and I actually do believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, St. Paul says, I will be saved place where we'd say no is that that faith has to be instantiated, has to be made manifest in my life. If I claim to believe that Jesus is alive and I ignore everything else he has to say in the Gospels, if I completely ignore the Scriptures, we might call into question, Father, do you actually believe that Jesus is alive? If you're ignoring everything else he has to say, we might call into question that belief in our hearts. So, of course, we'd say, well, if we believe that Jesus is alive, we want to be paying attention to what are the things that he invites us to do. And we're offered in today's first reading just a simple practice that can offer a structure to our whole lives to keep us living in that truth that Jesus truly is Lord and he truly is raised from the dead. We see in today's first reading from the, from the book of Deuteronomy is Moses explaining to the people the covenant that God desires to make with them. The people of Israel, he's brought them out of slavery in Egypt. He's about to lead them into the promised land. And he's establishing this deep covenant with them. That is a, a deep relationship, not, not just a contract that they're signing, but this is a place of a, a communion of love. They're entering into a place of committing themselves completely to the Lord as the Lord commits himself completely to them. And this is why Moses tells them, part of this practice as you enter into this land which the Lord your God has promised to you is to take the first fruits of the produce and set it before the altar. Set it before the Lord your God, recognizing that everything you have is a gift from him. So I'd say, well, what's the first fruits of the the quote-unquote produce in our lives? We could look at a few different things. First, we could look at our time. Do I offer the first fruits of my time to the Lord? Certainly we could say we're doing just that by being here at Mass. That was Sunday is meant to be a, a first fruits of the week, the first day of the week offered to the Lord as a day of rest, as a day of worship, and obviously we do that in a principal way by attending Sunday Mass. We could also look, what about the first fruits of my time on, on a daily basis? Do I start the day with just, a, even if it's just a simple offering of myself to the Lord, consecrating just a few minutes of time to Him that, that I might give myself, that I might offer those first fruits to Him? And of course, we could look at our gifts, our talents. Are, am I placing the gifts that the Lord has given me at the service of my brothers and sisters? And this doesn't necessarily mean that I have to be doing some service explicitly here at the church. While it's certainly a beautiful way to serve at our food pantry, other outreaches here, it could just be things to my neighbors, things to the people in my life. Am I laying my gifts at the service of my brothers and sisters in Christ? And of course, the final thing would be our financial gifts, our, our treasure. 
Am I offering the first fruits of what the Lord has given me back to him as an offering? And the traditional number that we see in the Old Testament is, is 10%. 10% of my gifts that, that I offer it back to the Lord, recognizing that everything I have is a gift from him. Now, part of this, not all 10%, maybe just a, a small fraction of a percent, can go to support the, the broader church as well. Today does launch the annual diocesan services appeal. Now, to be clear, I'm not going to go on and on about it. I'm just going to talk about one simple thing because this is, I would argue, the most important thing that this actually goes to support, and that's seminarian formation. I myself was blessed to be a, a beneficiary of the diocesan services appeal during my time in seminary. And if we want other priests, uh, we do need to be supporting the DSA. So I just simply offer this encouragement that we take time in the next week or two to prayerfully consider what the Lord is inviting us to give in that way. But all of these different facets, all of these different places where we can be offering the first fruits of our lives to the Lord, it's a way of demonstrating with our actions that we do truly believe that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead.